Sometimes you just have to give the fans what they want, and that's what we're getting with Elden Ring Shadow of Erdtree, which is a new DLC that came out with the game, and it's doing amazing on Steam. It's garnering the attention that it deserves after the highly successful Elden Ring game itself. It was one of the biggest games of the year, and it's getting that attention and the respect it deserves, especially after the Kai Sanat stream. We had so much people coming back to this game, respecting it. Of course, that was an advertisement push stream, but still, it's bringing people's attention back to a great game. And I think that's the main thing that we're seeing in the video gaming industry with some of these Japanese publishers and some of these other publishers that are dedicated to producing quality games like FromSoft. Their main focus is improving and bringing about a game that game players actually want to engage in and it reflects back with the game players that are continuously playing this game on Steam as a concurrent player count of over 142,000 people playing this game a high rating of 92 percent and it's just showing what happens when you please the fan base and i think on the opposite end with kill the justice league we see what happens when you don't please the fan base you have a player base that collapses a terrible review of around 70 percent and a concurrent player base of 111 people and this is a straight result of doing things that the fans don't want in a video game. And I think this is a parallel that we're seeing in gaming a lot more, especially with a lot of these East Asian games that are coming out nowadays that are showing what, what you can do if you focus on pleasing the player base rather than focusing on pleasing political activist organization, consultancy firms, and C-suite executives. And, and I think Kill the Justice League was a quintessential game where it was trying to please all the entities that don't care about video games was trying to please the political activists with his push of diversity and focus on feminist politics. And then we have the C-suite executives that demanded a live service game. And now we have those elements coming together, producing a game that is for no one. And I think that's where you eventually have a collapse in the player base where you only have 111 people playing your game because you made a game for no one that actually plays video games. And I think that's Kill the Justice League in a nutshell. It's a game made for people that don't like video games, that don't know anything about video games, and what they think gamers actually want and what they want to change the gamer's mind into being. And I think that's the main focus for a lot of people when it comes to these games, where they're making games and focusing on characters that no one really cares about. People want to be Batman. No one wants to really be Harley Quinn or Deadshot in a, a Justice League game. And I think that's the main thing people are frustrated with in the gaming industry where we're getting games being made for people that don't even understand gaming, don't even understand the universes they're creating games for. And this is a combination where people didn't like the comic books either. They didn't like games. They didn't like the overall product itself and they're producing games. And you can see the opposite with Elden Ring Shadow of Erdtree where you know it's coming from the people that made the previous highly successful game and they're making it with care and they're bringing in people that are making the game with care with Elden Ring they brought in fellow nerds to consult on the game with Elden Ring you had George R.R. R. Martin from Game of Thrones uh, contribute some of the the story pieces to the game and I think that is bringing in someone else that thinks like you to work on the game this is when consultancy is done right where you bring a fellow nerd that is immersed in building lore for the uh, four fantasy novels and you bringing them in to contribute to your game this is the opposite of what we saw with Kill the Justice League they brought in Sweet Baby Inc. to consult them on diversity and political and social gender standards rather than actually make a quality game about Batman and the Justice League. No, they wanted to make it about the, the people that killed the Justice League. And this is in part and parcel with the developers themselves that don't understand gaming at all the, or comic books. They think people actually want to play as characters that had one of the biggest bombs in the box office for DC Comics when it comes to the, the, the squad itself. They're not really successful except their first movie, which was Pan. So it's coming from this convoluted place where they have their own thoughts and perception of society and they want to implement it through this game. And rather than making a game for the game players, for the comic book fans, they made a game for themselves. And it's reflected back in the poor sales and overall failure of this game where it is leading to Rocksteady's downfall and maybe collapse. And we see this happening with a, a whole host of games that are doing similar things. And it's just a, a dichotomy of what you want to make games for. You want to make games for your political activist friends to cheer you on while they never open the game that you worked on? Or do you want to make games for the game player? People that want to play your games for hours at a time, that want to be immersed in a world of fantasy and monsters. Do you want to make them 
happy with the game that you're making and i think we're seeing a complete difference between a, a development team you have FromSoft with their team lead Miyazaki talking about improving the games making games more immersive going into the lore of the game he's talking about games that he worked on years ago where he's thinking I want to bring Bloodborne and Sekiro's combat philosophy in the next games and improve them and make it sharper and you have people really dedicated to producing a high quality game thinking about making the game better whereas you have with Kill the Justice League and Rocksteady you have people that don't even know what the gameplay they're supposed to be putting into the game you have them making a, a superhero game into a shooter game which is making no sense at all because we want to play as superheroes at, first of all and you're making us play as the bad guy shooting at superheroes no one wants to be the shooter people want to be the superhero beating up the bad guys that are shooting at them this is just the a lack of understanding of making a, a quality game and lack of understanding of uh, the characters that they're working with and i think this is a funny part of the the video gaming industry right now where triple a titles that are being run by these gigantic organizations refuse to make games for the gamers and i think kill the justice league is a result of that and i we see that with the collapsing of the overall we see that with the collapsing of the player base where it, it barely reached 8,000 people playing while other arkham games were at 20,000 and 25,000 people playing and at during its release those games were getting higher concurrent players than the new release that just came out and it's just showing the people going back in time and saying oh these get old games were better because they were made by people that love gaming and the elden ring Erd tree shadow of earth tree is reflecting back on the gamers that type of process of people making games out of passion and not out of political activism or corporate greed and i think that's what we're seeing with a lot of games now in the industry and kill the justice league is probably the epitome of that and that's why i want to make that dichotomy of these two games that came out closely and within the the same year almost where they're showing a difference in quality and a difference of care and i think that is the the glaring difference within society and the video gaming industry today where these big companies are not focused on the gamers and when you give the fans what they want they reward those companies i think fromsoft is getting those dividends it's making all the money it's getting all the praise it's getting all the money and it's getting all the attention while kill the justice league is just a distant memory and i think that is the failure in gaming today and i think i just want to give praise to elden ring shadow virtue for its release and i just like that people are still making great games here for everybody and not just for people that hate games and i think that's the glaring obvious difference between these two factors and two game companies and two games that are are that are, that are having leading two different paths of success and failure and i think that's the ultimate thing that we're seeing within the gaming industry you give the fans what they want they reward you back but you tell me what you think about the situation you think the differences are clear between shadow uh, between Elden Ring and Kill the Justice League, I think it is. It's obvious. Their overall productions, what led to their failures and success. But you tell me what you think. Maybe I forgot something. You add your comments. I like to hear what you have to say. Like, share, and subscribe. This is Wagner Knows Why. Catch you next time.